Rachel, a year doesn't be long passing. How many times have you watched the replay of the Grand National of 2021? The whole race, probably 15 times. Snippets, I couldn't count. Once a day, once a week. <laughs> if I'm feeling down, I just stick it on. You'd like to watch it all again? Let's go. The Grand National is a Grand National, and you get below to the start. We're going to watch it now. You lined up middle of the track. Why? In the Grand National, it's just kind of a free-for-all. Um, the etiquette rule book gets kind of thrown out the window. It just goes so fast. I and mean, when you're watching it live, this looks like it takes so long. But when you're riding in that, it just happens so quickly. Yeah, it happens so quickly. And looking back at it now from this camera angle, which must be the camera, the drone, we'll say, but we're, we're a lot more condensed than I felt. I didn't feel like... I, I felt like I had more space, but I actually don't really. <laughs> well, you have enough of space. I mean, well, actually, now I'm starting to get more you're space. You're five behind Claude Cat at four. Yeah. Burrow Saint is just outside you. They're heading to the second last with a full circuit to go. Could you believe you'd be slowing down that early in the race? Your hands rose on landing there to slow down. I just remember when, when I turned in there, he, he started to get really racy with the crowd. Clear to me... It's where you get the slice of luck you need to win a Grand National. From being inside any second now in the white cap, going to the fence, you land outside him. And that's ultimately going to be very, very lucky. Yeah, and that's what you need in this race, is for those things to, you know, to happen for you and, and to not be... Like, your whole thought process is... You don't have time to analyse things too much, so you're... You're constantly just looking for that little bit of space, I think. I know it's only not even quite halfway, but as the first section of the Grand National goes, this has been perfect for you. Yeah, I, I was really happy where I was. Um, I was really enjoying it. I knew that... Uh, enjoying it? I was enjoying it. I actually was, yeah. I was because I because I was where I wanted to be, so I was relaxed. Um, you know, it wasn't like I was three quarters of the way back and I was thinking, I want to get a bit closer. I don't want to be around him. You know, I was I was just happy where I was. I had plenty of space in front of me. He was traveling, he was jumping. It was, it was really enjoyable. But just back there, you did engage in a conversation with Patrick Mullins. How comfortable were you that you were able to talk to someone? That, to me, for a non-talker to talk, yeah, I think that's that's a massive sign of how content I was in the race. Like, I was where I wanted to be. He was jumping really well. Just in general, I, I'd be a lot... I, feel, I felt like I was just very relaxed going into the Grand National. You don't feel the same pressures as you feel maybe in Cheltenham and so on. There's not the same expectation. People know that a lot of things have to go your way and so on. So, yeah, I was able to... I think he asked me... How are you going? Are you going okay? And I gave him some kind of a response. You're heading out in the second circuit. Does Jet's distance in front ever cross your mind? Oh, is he getting a bit far away? No, it generally doesn't because I'm not really, I'm not, I'm still not thinking about the end of the race at all. Uh, and maybe that's a bad thing, but I'm, I'm literally just still jumping from fence to fence happy where I am. I never really look up to Jet and worry about him. I'm really just worried about myself, I suppose. Worry about yourself. Typical. Selfish. That's what I am. <laughs> what you are. Really? The silence is eerie there, isn't it? The crowd of horses has disappeared and, you know, there's only a smaller bunch of us there, maybe. And with the last in the national, is Manella time to lead them towards the elbow. I can remember that feeling. You're, you're heading to the elbow. There is silence. You can't hear the horses behind you. You're now thinking the Grand National is there. You can feel it. Yeah, you can feel it. It's 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 starting to creep into your bones a bit. Uh, from the from the last of the elbow, I remember thinking, I remember thinking like I'm I'm going to win the Grand National. Like he 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 was galloping for me, and I knew he wasn't stopping at all. And that's a lonely place to be in front on your own. And then there was another voice in my head saying something's going to pass you. Like something is going to pass you out here, but they didn't. But as you watch and look at yourself now. Do you get almost a sense of emotion in your chest? Thinking yeah, it's, it is actually emotional to watch. 
I'm not going to start crying. I'm not much of a crier in cinema, but it's, uh, it's, it's incredible, yeah. To have him won the Grand National. You visualised riding it as a kid. Yeah. But did you ever visualise this part? No, you, you never do. I never did anyway. I never really thought about how it would feel. Yeah, like you, you, and you can't even explain how it feels now. It's, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think pride's about as good a word as I can ever use for it. <laughs> what came with the Grand National in the next week, fortnight, three weeks? Like even that evening, Billie Jean King, uh, Ringo Starr, Dane Judy Dench, all these people that realised who you are and what you had achieved. I hadn't even caught up with my phone. So I remember people telling me, like, you know, Ringo Starr is just after posting on Twitter, Billie Jean King is, and like, I just, it's just hard to believe that they know your name for a start, let alone they're congratulating you for something you've done in your life, like with their achievements. Oh, it's just, uh, it's hard to believe, really. Do you now see yourself, or have you ever seen yourself as a role model for female? Yeah, I suppose you're, you're a role model without realising. The fact that I was the first female to do it was massive, but I think the amount of work that women put in writing for years before me to put me in a position where I wasn't hit with that feeling crossing the line, I think that's a massive thing for them all to be proud of. You only have to be champion jockey now, and that'll be the end of the first. Christ, can we have some dried Grand Brilliant. And in the story, we mustn't forget trainer Henry de Bromhead, JP McManus, the owner, and of course this guy, Manila Times. As Rachel said, she had